Thursday. I'm really excited for tonight's talk. I have a lot of exciting things to cover. I'm going to be talking about consistency tonight. I think that is one of the most important and most difficult things about riding and life in general. I'm also going to be talking a little bit more about contact and connection and roundness. That's been the theme for the last couple of weeks. And as you know, I have opened the doors to my brand new program called 30 Days to Round, which is an amazing program. We already have a lot of people that have signed up and are started working on the 30 Days to Round curriculum. The challenge officially starts on September 16th and it runs for a month, but I would recommend signing up as soon as possible if you're interested so that you can make sure that you understand the exercises and start working with your horse. Hi, Lily. Um, good to have all of you guys. So we're going to start out tonight's discussion with consistency. And it seems like anything in life, at least in my experience, that you want to do well, you have to be consistent about it. And I think that this is even more true in your riding and with horses. So for example, like fitness, right? If you want to get fit or if you want to be more flexible or if you want to lose weight, Consistency is super, super important in that endeavor because it's not something that you can just do overnight or like go to the gym once a week and work out super hard and see results. With horses and in riding, consistency is even more important for a couple of reasons. One is that horses are creatures of habit. And so they need that repetition and that consistency. Your horse needs to have a routine and part of their routine needs to be that they get worked. If you don't work your horse consistently enough, then it's going to be like starting over every single day. Your horse is going to be tense. Your horse is going to be distracted and your horse isn't going to have that mental tone and fitness that they need to do what you want. I always tell people that your horse is not a bicycle. You can't leave it in your garage all week and then just take it out for a ride on the weekend. Horses are really a commitment every single day. Now, the other reason that consistency is super important with horses is safety, both for you and for your horse. So psychologically for us, Riding can be scary and nerve wracking. The more consistent that you are about riding, getting in the saddle, or even if you don't ride, but just like getting out and doing some groundwork with your horses, that is going to help you to feel more confident. So it's going to help you with your mental state when you're more consistent. It's also going to help your horse with their mental state when they're when you're more consistent about working with them. Because if you only work with your horse like once or twice a week and the rest of the time they're just out in the field, that isn't enough for work to be a part of your horse's routine. So that means that riding or working is going to be out of the ordinary for your horse, which is not a good thing. So that's why consistency is super important. And that is part of why I made this 30 days to round challenge is just that it's a challenge to get you guys motivated. It's fall, it's September. So like we're going into winter, but there's still plenty of good riding time. And it's a challenge to get you consistently working with your horses. And I think that that's really important when you join a group of people and you're all going through it together and you're doing the curriculum and you're staying accountable, that can be a really big motivation to keep you consistent. I think a lot of times when we lose consistency, is when we lose motivation. And sometimes when you lo lose motivation, it can be from one of two things. One, you can lose motivation when you don't have the education that you need, like 
you don't know what to do and things are just getting worse. And so you get frustrated and give up. That can be one reason that you lose consistency. Um, another reason that you lose consistency can be that you don't have the support that you need. So riding is hard. You're going to have days that are like, oh my gosh, like this is so amazing and everything's going well. You're going to have days that things go terribly and you have a horrible ride with your horse and nothing goes well. And that's where you need support. You need people that are there to just simply encourage you and say, you know, don't give up, look at how far you've come, you're doing great, tomorrow's another day, get out there and do it again. You also need support where you can ask a question and be like, hey, Amelia, I'm having this problem, I don't know what to do, what do you think I should do? So the 30 days to round challenge is um, really about giving you those two things. So giving you education that you need and then also giving you the support that you need. Um, okay, let's see. Joan says that she joined the challenge. Yay. Um, yeah, let me know in the chat if you're here, if you've joined the challenge. Kathleen says it's going fabulously so far. So yeah, the challenge, I've been, we have a private Facebook group for the challenge. I've been reading everyone's comments and it's so cool to see the variety of horses. I really love that. We have all different breeds, all different ages, uh, some people in Western tack, some people in English tack. Um, so a lot of variety there. And really what we're looking for, the challenge is about your transformation. So it's not about what level you are. It's not about how advanced you are. It's about here's where we start and here's where we end. Um, the Facebook group is called 30 Days around. When you join the program, there's a link in the program that will send you to the Facebook group. So um, what was I going to say? Oh, the other thing that I have my notes here, but they are, <laughs> they're kind of a mess. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is that in the challenge, there's been a lot of questions about Kind of what I did within the program is that I broke everything down into these like little bite sized exercises that you do with your horse. And I think that a lot of times in dressage, we miss some of these little pieces with our horses and we just skip ahead to thinking like one day we wake up and we're like, okay, our, my horse has to go around and connect through his top line. And often, you've forgotten some of the fundamental steps. You haven't explained to your horse how to give to the pressure of the bit, how to go forward correctly, um, and as well as what you're doing with your body. So in the challenge, I have a group of fundamental exercises, which are like these little baby pieces that you need to do to teach your horse how to give to the pressure so that they can get round. Some of them are on the ground. So some of them are groundwork exercises and groundwork is hugely important. I truly believe that if you want to ride, you have to do groundwork. Why do I say that? Because the majority of time that you spend with your horse is on the ground. So even how you lead them from the stall to the cross ties, how you put on the bridle, the things that you do going to the mounting block, all of that stuff matters. And your horse is learning. They're interacting with you. Um, either they're training you or you're training them. So you have to do things on the ground that are going to help you under saddle. So that's my, I'm like a, a little bit of a pet peeve about groundwork. And I'm not saying that you need to go out and like, drill your horse for an hour on the ground and do like all these crazy games with your horse. But if you're having trouble with teaching a horse to accept the contact or the connection or move sideways, it can be extremely helpful to do it from the ground. Um, so let's see, D says, I've just joined. The videos are extremely helpful. Yay. Um, Gail joined the challenge. Um, Kathleen says her horse and the bite size was super helpful. Um, so the other thing that is, 
I think really important is that a lot of times we forget that your horse might not be ideal, meaning that I think sometimes trainers or judges, we assume that our horse knows things that they don't know. So what I mean by that is when I grew up riding, I was never handed like a perfectly trained FEI horse that understood everything. I was the one that always got the young horse or the problem horse or the difficult horse that didn't understand contact and connection. Because yes, in an ideal world, your hands are here, they're hip width apart, you move your fingers and your horse goes round. You put your leg on, they go to the bit and they go round. But a lot of times that's not reality. And you might be dealing with um, a young horse that's never had a bit in their mouth or an off the track thoroughbred that all they know to do is run fast with their head up in the air. Or maybe a horse that you're retraining from another discipline. Or maybe you have a horse that is a dressage horse and has been trained by a trainer And then you get it and you're not able to keep it round. So we have all of those scenarios within the program. And what I've done is break things down into like, here's the exact steps that you need to take to go back to square one, explain to your horse what you want so that you can achieve that, that you can achieve the contact and the connection that you want. Um, So... I have a couple questions for you guys. Let me know in the chat, in general, if your horse tends to be too strong, like if your horse pulls too much in the contact, or if your horse tends to be too light and kind of curls behind in the contact. Um, Go ahead and let me know in the chat if your horse is too strong and heavy or if your horse curls behind. Um, Kathleen says the actual sequence is helpful. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm glad that you're enjoying that. So some horses tend to be too strong and they'll like pull on you and you'll feel like your arms are getting pulled out of the socket. So let's see. Um, Tegan says strong. Joanna says I have one puller and one stargazer. Um, Lisa says strong. Amy says behind. So, okay, so we have most of you guys say that your horse is too strong. So in general, horses will tend to be more one or the other, either too strong or too light. Although I have some horses that will do both, either they'll kind of want to root or curl. The trick is to get them in, in between. So it's like, it's kind of like Goldilocks. It's like too hot, too cold, just right. You want your horse to be just right in the contact. So just right. I talked about it in the webinar on Sunday. If you missed the webinar, it was epic. You should go back and watch the replay. But in the webinar, I said the contact should be like you're holding a child's hand and crossing the street. So you want to have contact, like you want to be able to feel the lips on either side of your horse, but you don't want your horse to be like pulling you out of the saddle, nor do you want your horse to be biting their chest. And so part of your job in your training is that you have to work on getting them in that in-between place where you can feel their mouth. They accept, accepting the bit means just that. It means that you can feel their lips, that they're not too light or they're not too strong. They're not pulling more in one rein or pulling in the other rein. And this is tricky because every horse is a little bit different. And you have to have a special technique different based on whether your horse is too strong and, or too light. So that's part of what we cover in the challenge as well is like going through these different scenarios and helping you figure out what you need to do in order to get that ideal contact. Okay, so here's another question for you guys. Let me know in the chat if you are left-handed or right-handed because this is another thing that really affects your contact is so much of what you do in life is with your hands and most of us maybe one of you guys here is ambidextrous but most of us are either left-handed or right-handed 
Okay, so I see in the chat, most of you guys there are right-handed. Oh, Shari is ambidextrous. You go, girl. That's an advantage in riding for sure. So I'm left-handed. Yes, Kathleen, I'm left-handed. Who else is a lefty here? Most of you guys are right-handed. Maureen, you're a lefty too. So this affects your riding because most of us are more have more dexterity with our dominant hand. Um, and that affects your ability to manipulate the bit in your horse's mouth on that side. So one thing that I recommend doing is working on your ambidexterity. So can you brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand? Can you, you know, just in your life, can you practice doing things with your non-dominant hand? If you're left-handed like me, um, you're at a little bit of an advantage because a lot of ways that things are set up are for right hand dominant people. Like scissors are always made for right handed people. Um, if you just think about how you drive your car, you start it with your right hand, you shift with your right hand. Um, so it's important to just be aware of those asymmetries in your body. Um, the other thing that can affect contact with your horse is any injuries that you've had. So I broke my left collarbone and that messes up the contact on my left side because my shoulder isn't quite right. So it's tricky to get the perfect contact because we all are asymmetric and so are our horses. So we're either left-handed or right-handed. Our horses are what we call either, most horses are hollow on the left side and stiff on the right side. So part of training and teaching them to accept the contact and go round is about this. So that's part of it. Um, the other question that I have for you guys is what kind of equipment do you use? Like, do you ride in a snaffle bridle, a snaffle bit? Do you ride in a double bridle? Do you ride in a hackamore? Do you ride in a snaffle without a noseband? Do you ride with a noseband or a noseband and flash? Um, let me know in the chat. Okay, Andrea said she joined the challenge. So equipment is another important thing to consider when we're talking about contact and connection. I actually just filmed an entire like video for the challenge specifically about equipment. And the thing is that it's not so much what you use, it's how you use it. So let's see. Barbara is bitless. I love that. Bitless is, I think, a testament to like true harmony when you can go bitless. Lisa rides in a double jointed snaffle. That is what I ride most of my horses in, a double jointed snaffle. Um, Daniel, mostly pull side, um, snaffle with a plain nose band, loose ring snaffle, snaffle with no flash, a curb bit, comfort level one snaffle, no nose band, no flash, snaffle nose flashed with a nose band. Um, good. So I think it's important to like do what you're comfortable with, what your horse is comfortable with. Every horse's head and mouth is different. And so you kind of want to figure out what works and what is comfortable for your horse. That said, it's not so important what you use as how you use it. So you do want to find, you want to have a correctly fitting bit and bridle. Some horses really hate bits, and I've found that they prefer to go in a hackamore. However, if you're showing in dressage, you're not allowed to use a hackamore. You have to have a bridle with a nose band. Um, but again, don't think that changing your bit is going to magically fix your contact or connection issues. We've all done this. I've done it where I think like, oh, well, if I just buy this new bit or this new bridle or this new whatever, it's going to magically make my horse perfectly round, perfect in the contact. If it was that easy, that would be amazing. But it really is not so much what you use. It's how you use it. You might change like 10%. Um, like my horse, Harvey, for example, 
he's super sensitive in his mouth. Like, and he really hates when the bit like smashes his tongue. Like most bits, if they have a joint in them, right? Like say it's a single jointed snaffle. When you pull on it, it kind of does this. That's what we call the nutcracker effect. It bends in the middle and it a little bit squashes the tongue. Um, and Harvey hates that. So I have a bit that only bends a certain amount. It has like a big rubber piece in the middle and that is comfortable for him. But I still have the same contact issues. Like he's still too light in the contact. He still is a little stronger in the left rein. So changing the bit didn't solve my issue. It improved it a little bit, but it didn't solve it. And um, I go a little more into that, helping you guys figure out how to fit the bridle, how to fit the nose band, why the nose band is important, because all of that stuff in conjunction with teaching you how to use the equipment is super, super important. And I just filmed that video. So I'll be adding that into the Facebook group for the 30 days challenge. Um, what else? Okay. Um, I had, I wanted to talk a little bit about the canter and let me know if you're watching here in the chat, if you struggle with your contact and connection in the canter, I think that this is, I got a lot of questions from you guys about this. Um, leading up to the webinar, I sent out an email just like, hey, tell me what your biggest problem is in your riding. And it was really, really cool to read through these answers from you guys and learn more about what you're struggling with. And a lot of people struggled with contact and connection in the canter. The there's two main reasons why you're struggling with contact and connection. One is that you have an issue with the contact and the connection in the trot, but because the canter has so much more power to it, you just feel it a lot more in the canter. This is what I see a lot is people like go around and their horse is kind of on the bit in the trot. And then they go to the canter and the horse like puts their head up and gets super strong and they realize, you know, that the horse really isn't accepting the contact well enough. So in that case, you are going to want to go back to the trot and really like that's what I would recommend is go back to the trot and get it better in the trot and then bring that into the canter. The other thing that's really important with the canter is your body position and the way that you follow that motion because a big part of contact connection getting a horse around is your position is the way that you sit in the saddle the way that you move your seat in the saddle um, in order to get your horse to use their back and use their top line you have to work on developing your seat because if you're bouncing on your horse's back if in the canter, if your hips aren't following that motion, if your elbows are, get locked and your elbows aren't following the motion, then it's going to make it really difficult for your horse to stay round in the canter. So let's see. Gail says Clyde has no interest in contact at the canter, um, more so in the canter. Yeah. So again, you know, go back to the trot, work on it at the trot, work on your transitions, all of that stuff is going to help. And I do have some videos in the challenge that will help you with your canter. Um, one thing that is really cool within the 30 days surround challenge is I have a lot of GoPro footage where I have a camera, I put a camera on my helmet. I actually put some GoPro footage in this week's YouTube video, if you haven't watched it yet, it's called Why Round. So be sure to go to YouTube, watch my latest video called Why Round. There's GoPro footage so you can see, like looking down and see exactly what my hands are doing, which I think is really, really helpful for people to see that. Um, and what was I saying? I'm losing my train of thought. I've been I've been um, talking so much and it's also so hot. Like it has been a million degrees here in California. I've been trying not to turn my air conditioning on, but it's like getting really hot in this room. But 
The why round video is on YouTube and within the challenge, I have a lot of that GoPro footage. I actually also made my husband film some, he is Mr. Scrambled Eggs. So he kind of like invented the whole scrambled eggs analogy and he um, shows in the video, like exactly what he's doing to get his horse supple and get his horse round. So yeah, D Lee says, that the GoPro footage is very helpful. Um, let's see, Joanna, my horse puts his head in the sky during the canter trot transition. So I would recommend a little shoulder in, like a little bit yielding off the inside leg during that transition, kind of pushing your horse sideways, keeping a bend in their body. That will help to keep them rounder. Um, Daniel, if my horse does some does kicks out in the canner, is it better to hold the contact stronger so my horse will not have the opportunity to put his head down than up and kick? Am I right? Thank you so much. Okay, so that's a good question. It sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly, like your horse kind of puts like roots down and then kicks up behind. So in that situation, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like horses are a little bit like a seesaw. Like if the head goes down, the croup comes up. So you might want to feel like right as your horse dives down to keep their head a little bit up. You don't want to hold them. I mean, I think that the ideal with contact and connection is that you want your horses to be light and soft. But definitely if they go to dive down and you know that that's what happens just before your horse kicks out, then yeah, focus on your seat. Keep the horse a little bit more up. And that is going to help you um, not let your horse kick up. So anyways, um, I think that's a lot. If you haven't yet, also be sure to check out the replay from Sunday's webinar on contact and connection. It was really, really good. We had a lot of, it was actually kind of funny because we had more people wanting to come to the webinar than Zoom would allow at first. And so I apologize if you got locked out from the webinar. I got some angry emails from people that couldn't get in. Luckily, one of my team members, Nicole, was in the back end and she was able to pay Zoom a little more money so we could up our membership and we could have more people join. But that webinar was super cool. And I'm just really, really looking forward to the challenge, um, to seeing your guys' transformations, because it's really, really amazing. I've seen this, like, I used to think that my programs wouldn't work, but they do, like, they really work. And it's so cool to see where people started, where people finished. I already have people that have been trying out the exercises, and they're like, wow, I've been missing this. What a difference in my horse. So I really encourage you to commit and join the challenge. Also, it's awesome if you want to invite your friends to join. I think if you can have like a partner or some barn mates that you guys are working through it together, that would be fantastic. And I'm going to be doing live sessions three times a week during the challenge to help answer your questions. So the curriculum, that the exercises are all there for you to access whenever. And then there's a private Facebook group where you can ask me your questions. My team's going to be helping me to answer questions. And I'll be doing most of the live sessions. My team will be doing a few because I have a horse show at the end of the month. Um, but it's really exciting. And I can't wait to see your guys' transformations. So that's it for tonight. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. I hope that you were inspired by this talk to be consistent in your riding because I know that when you're consistent, you're going to see a big difference. Your horse is going to appreciate it. They're going to feel better. You're going to feel better. It's a win-win for everyone. So thanks so much.